Hey guys, welcome to the third video on bone markings where we are going to be talking about the last type of marking and they are depressions or openings in the skeleton. In the first couple of videos we talked about our muscle and ligament attachments and markings involved in joint formation but what we haven't talked about is all of the all of the uh, holes and openings in our skeleton that we need to get uh, arteries and nerves and all of that kind of thing through. So the first opening we're going to be looking at is called a foramen. Now a foramen is an oval or round opening and I'm highlighting them here on the skull. We can see them above and below the eye and also in the chin or mental region. Now I'm just going to draw a line linking these two orbital foramens. As I discussed earlier in the body positions video, we have a common naming pattern. So we're going to have a supraorbital, meaning above the orbital region, and infraorbital, meaning below the orbital region. And they're both foramens. So that's how we name that structure. Now on the chin, we just call it the mental foramen, as we call that the mental region on the body. Now I'll just point out as well that these are passages are for muscles, arteries, veins and nerves, just so we can uh, supply that area and the uh, skull or any other bones where we will find a foramen is not getting in the way. The next structure we're going to look at is called a fissure. Now a fissure is a much larger uh, groove or a slit-like opening within the skeleton and we can see it here within the orbital cavity. So again we can see one in the upper region of the orbital cavity and in the lower region as well. So just shading in this fissure area. And as with everything else we have a common naming pattern. So we're going to call it the superior or inferior orbital fissure. So I'm just writing above and below here superior or inferior and orbital fissure. Before I move on to the last few bone markings we will find in the body, I'll just point out that by understanding that the names we are discussing, such as the foramen or fissures or condyles, uh, tubercles and all the others, it's the same at looking at a map of the world. On a map we can quite easily identify a river because we know what it will look like. It's exactly the same with naming features on the skeleton because we can see what the structures look like and they all have a common identifying name. Okay, now for our last few structures, the first one we'll see is a meatus. Now a meatus is a, a longer canal-like passageway as opposed to a foramen which is uh, more of just a hole. So we'll have a look uh, inside the uh, medial view of the skull here and we can see an internal acoustic meatus. Our next term is going to be called a fossa. A fossa is a basin-like depression that is often the surface for articulation of a joint, but we see them in many areas of the body, and the example I'll show you on here is on the internal surface of the skull. It's going to be called the posterior cranial fossa, so I'm just highlighting it here. And if I just shade in, we can see that it's a uh, depression. So it's on the internal surface of the skull, but it's towards the back or dorsal side of the body. So posterior cranial fossa. So we'll just make a note of that down here as well, that it's often a site of articulation of joints. So just writing that down here. And we'll move on to the next bone marking, which is going to be called a groove. And I'll actually have to put up um, a couple of different bones here to show you these. So we've got the uh, humerus, which is the bone of the proximal portion of the arm, the radius, and the ulna, which are the bones of your forearm. 
Now, a groove is a, a shallow depression or a furrow within a bone. If we have a look on the humerus down here, we can see a bone marking called the radial groove. Now, a radial groove is going to allow the uh, brachial artery and radial nerve room to run along that bone surface without getting uh, compressed or uh, squashed by muscle or any other tissue that's around that area. So we can see an artery running through there. And also I'll just use yellow to show you an, a nerve as well. So brachial artery and radial nerve are going to run through there. The next structure is called a notch. A notch is going to be a structure that is similar to a fossa, but located on the edge of a structure. If we have a look down here on the proximal end of the ulna, we can see the trochlea notch. I'm just shading it in here. Once again, this type of bone marking, as with many of our depressions, is going to be a site of articulation. So we've got our trochlea notch there. Our last common feature of the skeleton that we are going to discuss is called a sinus. Now I know you've heard the term sinus before and you've probably also declared out loud that your sinuses are blocked without actually knowing what they are. A sinus is an enclosed cavity within a bone that is going to be filled with air and lined with a mucus producing membrane. So we can see one on the front of the skull here and it's uh, simply going to be named after the bone that it's found within. So the frontal sinus. And we can also see another one down in this lower portion of the skull that's going to be enclosed within the sphenoid bone. So we'll just call that one the sphenoidal sinus. And when you have an overproduction of mucus within those sinuses, that's what gives you that blocked up feeling when you have the flu. Now that wraps up everything that we've discussed with all of the features that you'll uh, find on the skeletal framework. I hope these videos have been helpful and as always thanks for watching guys.